Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I think that sometimes, because of lack of knowledge, the church in general um, really doesn't understand that science is as important as the Word of God. As a matter of fact, science is what validates that the Word of God is for real. Now, I didn't need science to tell me that because God allowed me to experience so many wonderful things with him that I believe him. I don't need no one to tell me that he is God. I know he's God because I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, right? And so I want you to please, as we go into the next few weeks, talking about thinkers, don't start thinking, oh, I already know where he's going to go. No, you don't. (laughs) I'm going to throw you so off today. You're going to think that you had it down, and you're going to realize that you thought wrong. Are you ready? Okay, so let's start with this. God has given us a beautiful gift called faith. It's a seed. He says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be be ye removed, and it would be removed for you, and be cast into the sea, and it will obey you. Okay, the problem with the church is that we can be so faith-driven and not really use our brain (laughs) along the way. Are you with me? I'm jacking up some minds already. (laughs) Faith is awesome. Listen, faith is the foundation in order for us to transform the way we think. Okay, so God says, I not only want you to have faith, but the church has taken the works out from the faith. We know that the word says, but faith without works is so, so many times we're, we're waiting and we're faithing. We're waiting and we're faithing. But God's saying, no, I want you to do something while you're waiting. But pastor, I'm praying and I'm waiting. Okay, great. Pray, wait, but do something. And so let's just break this up. For, let's, let's just kind of unpack the whole thing. I'm going to take you to this verse in first, Second Kings, sorry, chapter 3 quickly because i got to break this down. Because I believe that if you have ears to hear today, we're going to change the way we think. We're going to shift. How many are ready for a shift in the way you think? Because how you think, how you think now has brought you this far. And maybe you're stuck. And so the only reason that you're probably stuck is because you've been stuck with a thought. So you ready? Look at this. Second Kings chapter uh, 3 and verse 15 and through 17. I'm going to read the Read it to you from the New King James. It says, but now. Everybody say, but now. That's right now, right now. He says, bring me a musician. So what did we just do right now? We worship God like nobody's business. Come on. God says to, to, to Elijah, God's speaking to the prophets. God speaks to everyone in the prophets of, of the Old Testament. He says, bring the worshipers. So we worship. He says, bring now the musicians, which we did today, right? It says, then it happened. And I believe that today something happened as we worship God with everything today. I re- whether you felt it or I don't feel nothing. You don't need to feel it. You know what? You just need to know it. Something happened today. Okay, look. And so it says, and then it happened after they worshiped when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon them. God's hand is upon you right now, whether you like it or not. I don't believe that. I don't care because it's on you right now. You're in this church, it's on you. You get with us, it's going to be on you. And the hand of the Lord came upon him and he said, thus says the Lord. And I believe that today God is speaking to the church. This word today is not a message, it's a prophetic word. Please listen today. I'm going to jack up some minds for good today. It says, then he said, make this valley full of ditches. Everybody say full of ditches. He said, make your valley. In this, in this time, the Israelites were going through so much pain. They were going through so much drought. Listen, there was no rain. There had been no rain, which means there was no water. Their, their stock, everyone was dying. People were famished, and there was nothing. There was, they, were, they were just so stuck in this idea that, my God, we're going to die. But then God, in the midst of their trouble, he said, worship. Right now, you probably came in today with trouble, but you worship. And that's what God does. When you, are, when you are willing to worship, when you're willing to say to yourself or think to yourself, I'm going to worship God, 
you are moving the hand of God when you worship him. And then what happens is when they worship, when the worshipers worship, it says, then the Lord spoke to them and he said to those who were dry, right, no water. Because here's the truth. Here's the truth. You know what God says? Go and I will show you. But we say, no, show me, then I'll go. And so, and so here God is saying, hey, listen, uh, they were expecting when they worship, when they prayed, God, now bring the rain down. Just bring it, God. <laughs> we believe. God's like, nope, go dig some ditches. No, you don't understand. We didn't pray for ditches, God. We prayed for rain. <laughs> so many of us are praying for the thing that we need, but it doesn't look like the thing that God's trying to give you. God, give us water. Dig some ditches. No. Maybe my accent's too strong. Dios, dame agua. Lluvia. Hazme ditches. <laughs> and, so, and so you would think that, that God would have just answered that the reason he started jacking up the way they think is because their thought was, as long as I have faith to believe God, he'll do it for me. And God said, we're going to jack this thing up. Uh-uh. No, no, no. You see, we have become so, so accustomed to think things that we perceive that will happen and not even have, like, real knowledge or real information. For example, you go outside and if it's a cloudy day, what do you, what do you all say? It's going to rain. <laughs> it's going to, you see, oh, see those black, I mean, you sound like, like, like newscasters sometimes. Like, yeah, you see that cloud? I do that with my guy. I'm like, see that cloud over there? There's going to be some thunder coming out of that cloud right there. It's going to be pretty crazy amazing. So, yeah, y'all need to get ready. Hey, I call the staff. Hey, guys, make sure you put up the tents because rain's coming. They're like, Pastor, there's no rain. I don't care. There's black clouds that's coming. And so we are so good to forecast the things we see. And so here's what God says. He's like, you know what? I'm going to jack up the way you think because I'm not going to give you any forecast. He says this, look, look, I'm, I promise you. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Next one, quick. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see. Everybody say, you will not see. And how many of us want to see the proof? Show me, God. You will, but he's saying, but you're not going to see. No, but show me and I'll believe you. No, you will not see. When you're not going to see rain, yet that valley that you are so dry in, come on, I don't know what you came in with today, but I'm telling you right now, whatever dry place you're in right now, maybe there's a dry of finances. Maybe there's a dryness of joy. Maybe your, your healing is drying up. Come on, I don't know what's drying up, but God is saying, dig me some ditches. I don't want you. Just having faith is not enough. Faith without works is dead. But God, what do you mean? Ditches, are you saying that you want us to work and just fill the valley with a whole bunch of ditches? Yup. And God's saying, and guess what? And you're not going to see clouds, so you have no forecast. And you're not going to see wind, so you're not going to see the, the clouds are being blown in. He's saying, you just dig the ditches. And I would do the filling. You just, in other words, you do what I gave you, which is think. And I, see, it's hard to change the way we think, but it's not impossible. Not impossible. And many of us have been stuck with a way of thinking from this family line. Come on. It just keeps being transferred over to the next generation. Maybe right now you have been transferred over all kinds of crap in your life. And then we started living that way because that's all we know. But God's saying, hey, listen, no, 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 no. But with me, you start hanging with me. I give you a new family line because now you have the line of the blood of Jesus. And you belong to a whole new family. And we're going to destroy that past. We're going to create a new line. And so here he says, yet the valley shall be filled with what? water so that you, your cattle, and your animals may what? Drink. So God's saying, I'm going to change the way you think so that you, your children, your children's children, your children's 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 children will now start thinking the way I want you to think. Look at a neighbor say, usa tu cerebro. Please. Please. 
Listen. Wherever you're at, you have to stop and think because God wants to do something. I'm going to share a quick story with you. Uh, you know, I have been working super hard right now uh, with our foundation and, uh, and, and, and now getting more focused in rescuing kids that are sex trafficked. I'm talking about children, five years old, six years old, that have been raped uh, 21 times per day. Uh, I just came back from Mexico and uh, met... Uh, this one lady who just rescued a girl who we're also uh, connecting with. She's the, the fourth most powerful woman in Forbes magazine who is now mentoring me, which is awesome. And, uh, and, and she's an activist for human trafficking worldwide. And she just rescued a girl 61 times a day she was being raped. 61 times a day. And, and you know what? Many of these victims think that they're not victims because they're pimps confused them and told them, I love you, and so I'm doing this because I love you. And so now their thinking is so jacked up that the lie has become their truth, and their truth has become their behavior. And so God wants to break the way we think. So it's not impossible for God to do something amazing in your life. Let's just start with this. I'm going to show you some images, but let me give you some rules. Do not open your mouth. Do not say nothing. I want to just show you some pictures, and I want you to look at it and think what images you're seeing. And when you see those images, keep it to yourself. Nobody needs to say it. We don't want anybody right there being a brown nose today. Amen? Okay, you guys ready? Let's, let's put the first image up quickly. All right. Close it. Off. Okay, how many here with a raise of hands saw a rabbit? Lift your hands if you saw a rabbit. A few people. Okay, put your hands down. How many saw the duck? Boom. Did you see that? Look around you. Most people saw the duck and only a few people saw a rabbit. Okay, let's look at the next image. All right. Look, look, look. Put it away. How many people saw chess pieces? Lift your hands. Okay, put your hands down. How many saw the people? A few hands. You see the difference? Okay. Perception. Listen, when you think... You don't, you don't see things by these eyes. You see things by how you think. It's not these. We focus on these. No, these are just your lenses. But you don't, you don't see with your lenses. You see with your brain. So the reason so many times we stay stuck and we don't move forward, it's not because of what we see. It's how you think. It's not a see issue. It's a think issue. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's just think. It's not what you see. It will never be what you see. It will always be what you think. And so next image, look at this one. All right. And close it. How many saw the old lady? How many saw the young lady? A few people. There we go again. Let me give you another one. How about this one? Uh-huh. Okay. Put it away. How many saw the giraffe? I'm just playing. Nobody did that. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone lift a hand on this side over here. I just won't point at them. <laughs> how many saw the elephant? Yes. But how many feet did the elephant have? How many legs? Did you guys see that? No, six legs. Six legs. Okay, so what's the, what's the point? Why are you doing this? Because I want to prove to you that there's a difference how you see and there's a difference how God sees. What you're seeing right now, God does not see it the way you see it. Because most, um, most often or most common, we always see the negative versus the positive. It's, it's human nature. But how many know that God wants to create a new nature in you? Right? Human nature is how we have been so destructive and so messed up that we begin to just live life out of the way we've been shaped. And God's saying, hang with me and I'll reshape you. Are, are you hearing me today? So I wanted to give you this foundation because as we go the next few weeks, I want us to know that sometimes we know that we're supposed to do things. Sometimes we know that we're supposed to do something. But have you ever, have you ever been in a place where like, okay, I, I know I got to do this. But somehow you talk yourself out of doing that one thing. And then you kick yourself later because you knew you should have done it, but you didn't do it. Like how is it that... That we get to that place where we can talk ourselves out of our healing. We can talk ourselves out of our peace. We can talk ourselves out of our promise. 
but when you start thinking the way God thinks, God says, listen, when you think like me, when you set your mind on things above, when you say I have the mind of Christ, you start thinking your way back into your promise. You start thinking your way back into healing. And so many times the fear that grips us, the lies that come after us begin to shape a new way of thinking. And God's saying we got to break that. Because everything that we think begins with a thought. Everything. Everything, everything, think about it. Education began with a thought. You decided to go to school. A happy marriage began with a thought. You decided we're going to be happy in this marriage. An unhappy marriage is also started by the way you think. Come on, success. If you're successful in business, it all started with a thought. Well, guess what? If you have no success, it's because the way you think. It started by the way you thought. It all starts the way you think. Progress. If you're constantly, you're progressing, you're moving, you're doing, things are happening. That started with a thought. But if you're digressing, if you keep going back, if you're, you know, two stepping forward, 20 stepping backwards, that's just because of the way you think. There's no other reason. Everything that has happened in your life began with a thought. But God wants to take us from the things that we have chosen, the choices that we have made that have not been the greatest, and God wants to begin to help us change the way we think so that we change the way we leave. Because here's the truth. The direction of your life is based on the way you think. How you live is led by the way you think. It's the direction that is, you're headed in the direction that you think right now. So if you're always thinking negative, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm not good enough, I'm worthless. I, 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 I'm, and you know what? You didn't come up with those thoughts. Someone put those thoughts in you first. And then you just took the thoughts and you started running with them. The enemy's crafty. Yeah, but that was my mom, not the devil. Okay, well, God. <laughs> God can save her too, don't worry. Praise God, amen. She needs Jesus too. But how many know that there's an underlying theme when we experience this, when teachers or parents or siblings start saying things that, that come out of their mouth? It's deeper than them, but there's an enemy that's trying to destroy us. So you know why? Here's the truth. Since the beginning, God said, I'm going to give them a brain. Have you ever thought about why God gave us a brain? A brain is for us to feel a sense of three things. It's called hashtag PIP. Protection. Doesn't your brain, when you're in trouble, doesn't your brain tell you, Warning, 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 right? Your brain feels pain, right? Your body doesn't feel pain. Your brain is telling you there's pain. It's not your body. It's your brain. So he gives you protection. You know what he also does? He gives you an identity. God gives you an identity. He placed his image and he made you like him. Well, there's a way that he wants us to think. He wants us to think the way he thinks and he wants us to see the way he sees. He wants us to speak the way he speaks. He wants us to live the way he lives. He gave us an identity and he gave us prosperity or provision. He's PIP. Any father gives that protection. He gives their children identity and he gives them provision. He does that. So God gave us a brain in order for us to have these three things in our life. And the enemy comes to destroy all three of those things. And so then we start creating this new, this new person because of the way we've been shaped and thought by our experiences. And so I'm going to ask you to really think about this in the next few weeks and say, you know what, maybe I am stuck in a thought right now. Maybe I think I'm good, but I'm really not because here's the truth. You can always go further in life than where you're at right now. There's more. And the only reason you're not going further is because you're not thinking you can go further. But you can go further. You can go stronger. You can go longer. You can do so much more. Your life will go in the same direction you think. Remember that, okay? And so it all starts with a thought. That's why God constantly, he is admonishing the church constantly. As you open your Bible, he's admonishing you. He says, hey, listen, I want you to guard with all diligence the way you think. And he says, and guard your heart. He's constantly talking about this. But think about this. He gives us this book called the Bible. It's an open book test. He says, you know what, I give you a new way of thinking. But how many know that sometimes we just get too lazy to read our Bible. And then we're questioning God, why aren't you speaking to me? We are waiting for this word to just 
voice to come out of nowhere and just be like, hey, just take the job, man. Just, <laughs> it's all good. No, listen, open your Bible and then God begins to speak to you. The, the word does not only speak to you, it changes the way you think. And so God wants to change us, but we got to open. That's our ditch. The ditch that we need is open your word and God says, and I'll fill you. We have to learn how to do that. Are you with me today? Because here's the truth. We are one thought away from either destiny or we're one thought away from demise. That's just the bottom line. One thought away from destiny. Right now, in the next year, if you can just think, just change one way of thinking right on your life, you are just one thought away from having a greater victory. Let's look at a verse. Because obviously the church was having an issue here. And the Apostle Paul is speaking to the Philippians. And man, I'm telling you, uh, being negative is just, it's just normal for us nowadays. Right? We're just like, we always think the worst. We don't think the best in people. You know, if they mess up once, that's it. They suck. Right? Your boss has a bad day. He's a jerk. It's like, man, it's like, no. Look, look, look what Paul says. So he's talking to the Philippians like, hey, guys, we got to stop this noise. The way we've been thinking is wrong. Look, he says, finally, my brothers and sisters, always, everybody say always. He says, always think. How many of us hardly think? Or we get stuck in the rut of the routine, so you just keep thinking the same things because you haven't given birth to a new thought. And so Paul's saying, hey, guys, let's stop this. Let's always think. Do you know that if you can think your way to greater success, you can think your way to a happier life, you can think your way to joy, you can think your way to, watch, he says, think always, think, think, usa tu cabeza, about what is true, think about what is true, so many times we think about what is a lie, because how many here would admit today that you are stupid, but how many have thought that you are stupid, no one's going to be honest, I'll think, I've, I've said stupid to myself, like, you're so stupid, but guess what? But I won't stand here and say, hey, guys, I'm stupid. <laughs> I, I'm not. But I thought it. And so we have to watch it. And so here he says, finally, my brothers, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise. He said, think about those kinds of things. But we are so trained to only think about everything that we've experienced. Here's, here's, what, here's what it looks like. I have people that I meet with, and I'll share things like this, and they'll be like, you know what, but you don't get it. I've been through some hurt. I've been through some pain. You don't get it, man. I've been abused. I've, and listen, God is not saying deny your pain. He's not saying deny your hurt. He's not saying deny your experiences. He's not saying that. But he is saying this. At some point, we have to go ahead and realize that everything that meant for bad for your life, every bad experience, every hurt, every pain, everything that you've experienced in life, God's saying, if you just give it to me with the enemy meant for bad, I will use it as an opportunity to use it for something good for your life. But see, it takes a mind of Christ to think that way. Because we get so stuck in our woe is me instead of wow is he. You hang out with wow long enough, you're going to change. You hang out with woe enough, you're going you're gonna to reap that. I'm telling you. It's possible. So he says, think about what is noble. What's, no, what's the word noble mean? Noble simply means this, that you know what? I, I don't just come from any pedigree. I'm a noble man. You see, when was the last time that you thought, wait a minute, I'm God's kid. I'm his kingdom kid. Like if you just started thinking, no, you know what? Everywhere I go, I got favor. Why? I'm God's kid. He loves me. He wants the best for me. What? How many parents do I have here? Lift your hand if you're a parent. Tell me, what, which one of you parents... You could put your hands up. Which one of you parents wants the worst for your son or your daughter? Like you just wake up like, man, I hope you just trip and fall today. You just, I hope you hit your head when you walk out the car. No, nobody thinks that. Everybody wants the best for their children. So when, when did we start thinking, God doesn't care about me. No, yes, he does care about you. 
He cares about you. He loves you. He wants the best for you. Then why am I going through cancer? Why am I going through this challenge? Why? Let me tell you something. Your children go through challenges. Your children will go through troubles. Your children are going to face some big obstacles. Your children are going to face giants in the land. But guess what? But because I ingrain in them that we don't quit, we fight the good fight of faith. We stand strong. We believe. We confess the word. We stand strong no matter what we face in life. Why? Because we choose to think always about what is true, what's lovely, what's worthy of respect. If anything excellent or worthy of, uh, 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 or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things and watch what God do. True story. So um, I've been working a bazillion hours and I took one day off after two weeks. And the one day I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to go ride a motorcycle. And I did. I, I, I got, I got, I rented a Harley and I told my family, peace, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I went riding. But I went, I went riding to, to a desert. And, and, and it's not that I, I, I mean, there's pavement in the desert, right? But in this typical road that I went through, there was no pavement. It was all dirt and rocks. Now, if you ride a motorcycle, it is not wisdom to ride on a dirt road with rocks and pebbles with a 1800 pound motorcycle okay so i'm riding i have no choice it's not like oh yeah let's go ahead and choose this obstacle no if i want to make it back i had to take this road and so many times we want to change but you're not willing to take the road that's going to need that change and so I'm on this road, and I'm like, I'm looking all gangster tails, like, you know. But, but the rocks and the pebbles and the, and the street was, it wasn't straight and flat. That would have been awesome. No, the road I was on was like this. Whoop. I'm like, so I'm freaking out because I'm trying to keep the bike straight, but the pebbles and the rocks, they, they kind of make you slide a little bit. So at this one point, I'm riding, and I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm going left. And I start pulling my whole body. I'm pull, I mean, I'm pulling my weight to turn this bike. No, it was too late. The rocks were sliding the tires. So check this out. I'm riding, and I slide all the way down to the embankment, which is not like this, but it's sliding like this. And along the embankment then is a dirt wall. So check this out. I'm in the desert. The next closest town is 25 miles. There is no cell phone reception. There is no call box. I'm in the middle of the desert desert and the bike goes whoop and of course tries to take my leg and I'm like oh Jesus help me fall so I get out of it and I jumped out I didn't cuss I said Jesus <laughs> and I got off and check this out first of all there's no way that one person can pick up an 1800 pound bike it doesn't have this is like a road king okay this is a huge bike okay I ride Race bikes, easy. I can, I can, even though it sometimes takes two guys to lift that bike, but I can, still, I can lift up a, a, uh, a, a race bike. No big issue, you know. But a road king, not only is the bike heavier than a mother, but now, I didn't say nothing bad. Stop it. <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble. Stop. But the tires are, are, are now against the embankment and the drop. So think this. It's not just lifting a bike. Now it's against the embankment. So how are you going to lift a bike when it's already like this instead of flat on the ground? So I grab it, and I'm just like, um, I didn't even move the thing. I, I'm, nothing happened. Like nothing. And I'm, and I'm like, oh, my God, what the heck did I just do? I'm like, oh, my God, no one's going to find me. I'm in the desert. And negative, negative, negative. That's okay. And, I know, and now, now I'm trying to do something with the wrong attitude. I'm desperate. When you're desperate, you do stupid stuff. <laughs> Let me see all my stu- No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then I'm like, and nothing and nothing. And listen, honest to God, God is my witness. If you don't believe me, I don't care. But I start <laughs> praying. I start praying. I'm like, God, you know, I'm in the desert. I'm alone. And, and I honestly, I genuinely, I, before God is my witness, I say, God, I need your help. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to walk 25 miles. Okay, that's in the desert. And so I said, God, I need your help. And you know what? Obviously, natural mind thinking is you always pick up from the, the weight. Where the weight is, that's where you pick up. You never pick up from the light. You pick up from the weight because that's where you're going to get your best resistance, right? Well, all of a sudden, as I prayed, I thought, I'm just going to lift the bike from the handlebars. How many would say that's kind of stupid, right? Like, how are you going to lift an 1,800-pound bike from the hand, like the handlebar? Oh, yeah. 
Stupid, right? But guess what? This thought came into my mind when I started changing the way I thought and I started praying to the one who can help me. And I said, God, you have to help me. I, I, I promise you. I don't like to swear, but I, 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 I swear I promise you. <laughs> I literally, honest to God, I picked up the, the, the handlebar and I just, I lifted, I lifted the motorcycle as if it was a bicycle. I am freaking out, like, oh, my God, I'm lifting them. <laughs> I was like, what? And I'm like, oh, my. And I got out, I'm like, what the heck? Just turned it on. And I was like, oh, I, I, listen, I promise you. I was right, like, oh, I love you, God. Oh, I love you. You are so awesome. You are. Let me tell you something. When you finally stop thinking that it's impossible with you, but possible with God. God will do supernatural things like he did with the church of then when he said, you need water? Dig some ditches and I'll fill them. Mauricio, you want, the, you want to pick up this bike? Pick it up from the front where everybody would say you're stupid, but I'll do the rest. So when you're weak, God says, I'm strong in you. Can we give God a big hand clap of praise? And then I said to myself, where's a GoPro when you need it, right? I'm like, Ugh. no one's going to believe this, but I'm not lying to you. I promise you this happened. So he says, think, think. You're one thought away from your destiny. You're one thought away from your breakthrough. You're just one thought away from seeing the impossible happen when you decide to hook up, link up, shack up with God. He'll change it, man. He'll, he'll, he'll revolutionize it. Too many times we're doing it on strength and we're frustrated, we're desperate. But you bring God in and it's all of a sudden like, whoops. When was the last time you gave birth to a new thought? Like, you know what? This is impossible, but with my God, for real, the revelation, all things are possible with him to those who believe. I think we've been trusting us too long. It's time to transfer back on him. Because me is caught up in my woe or my woo. Where God's like, hang with me and I'll give you a wow. That's my God. Are you hearing me today? A few more minutes. Let's get out of here. So, so God's not saying deny your pain. God's just saying get a God perspective. He's not saying, hey, listen, you're a jerk because you're perceiving it wrong. He's just saying, hang with me and I'll show you a better way. He's not saying you're dumb. He's not saying you're stupid. He's not saying that you're worthless. He's not saying that, that you're no good. He's just saying, hey, daughter, hey, son, just come with me. Those who are heavy and, and feel that you're, you're burdened, he says, come to me and I'll give you rest. God says, my ways are higher than your ways, Mauricio. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. When will we give God that truth? And say, you know what, God, you are right. You are better than me. You're higher than me. You think further than me. I need your help. Can you imagine how much further we'll probably be if we just went ahead and hooked up with God? Can you imagine what he would do, what you see as an issue that is bringing you back? Let me tell you something. God will take your problem, your issue, and he'll use it to propel you forward. The problem is not the problem. Say it with me. The problem is not the problem. So get over your problem. All we see is the problem. Stupid cup. You don't keep my tea hot all three services. You dumb cup. And we stay stuck on, man, why can't it just stay hot all three services? Why do you have to keep pouring a new tea all day long? Why? Why can't it just stay hot? Why can't you just be? A... And so we get so fixated on the problem. And God's saying the problem is not the problem. Oh, my kids are out of whack. No. The problem is not the problem. My finances are jacked up. The problem is not the problem. Those people are just full of, you end the sentence in a good way. No. The problem is not the problem. Here's the problem. It's in between your ears. That's why God says stop conforming to the way this world thinks. Because the world will always look at your situation and say, 
dang, bro, you'll never, you'll never afford that. That's a lie. Who said that? Let me read you a verse quickly because, look, the Israelites. You guys, you guys still good? Is this too much? Okay, okay, look at this. So the Israelites, real quick, I'll be done honestly. It's only 1119. I'll be done in five minutes. I'll be done. So don't laugh anymore. Just stay with me. Numbers 13, 1 and 2 says this. So we know that God is trying to give the people of Israel. He wants to give them something. Please look at me. Everybody look at me. God wants to get something to you. God's trying to get something to you. He is. He's trying to get something to you. Please believe me. God wants to get something to you. Don't be so arrogant and think that God is not, that he's not moving on your behalf. God wants to move on your behalf. You just haven't thought that he could. See, the issue is that you can. It's, it's that you won't. It's not that you can't. You, you just won't. But today you will. I will put my will back into the Father. I'm going to will forward. I'm going to bend forward. God, whatever you want, I'm willing to do it. And you know what? The next few weeks we're going to start changing the way we think. So look. So God is grabbing the Israelites and he's talking to Moses. He says, Moses, I want to give you guys something. I want to show you something. Come here, Moses. Come here. I want you to grab some people. Don't just grab any men. Everybody say men. Anybody can be a man, but not every man's a leader. Come on, be, be God's leader, man. Come on. We can do this together. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe. Everybody say tribe. Come on. You got to change for the sake of your tribe. You got to change for the sake of your children. I ain't married. I got no children. But you will one day, praise God. For the sake of your tribe, he says, of their fathers, and you shall send a man, everyone, a leader among them. I love this. Verse 26 through 28 says, so the men went out and they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole community of Israel and the people at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. And there the men reported to Moses and Aaron and all the people, look at this, and they showed them the fruit of the land. God gives them a vision and even tells them, all right, I'm going to show you some grace. I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you the willingness, uh, the permission to go in and check out what I'm promising you. This is the only time I'm going to go ahead and show you something. And so they go in there and they come back and they start saying stuff like this. They say, look, Here's all the fruit of the land. They're all excited. Then they gave Moses the report. They said, we went into the land you sent us to. It really does have plenty. Everybody say plenty. We don't serve a God of enough. We serve a God of plenty. Plenty. He's like, man, there's plenty of milk and honey for all of us. It's going to be amazing. Here's some fruit from the land. So they even brought that back. But the people, look at this. Everybody say, but the people. It's always but the Christians who live there, right? So look at this. This is what they see. But the people that live there, but the enemy, but the work, the people who live there are powerful. God never said, go and see how powerful they are. Isn't it interesting? God says for you to do something, we do the opposite. God said, just go see what I'm trying to give you, man. Oh. Man, they're powerful people. God didn't need that information. It's like you, God tells you, go apply for that job. And you show up like, I'm not qualified. God said, go get the job. He didn't say if you were qualified or not. Like, where, where do you get that from? And listen, I will bust any thought of anyone here who's educated, who has a degree. Okay, you may have a degree, but I have a pedigree. And I come from nothing, from poverty. And I have worked in a company responsible for billions of dollars with no degrees. But the word of God that I spend four hours reading every single day. I've written the Bible, read the Bible twice, the whole thing, from cover to cover. That God has changed the way I think. And I no longer went in as an unqualified person. I went in qualified by God Almighty. And that is why I have been in the positions that God has brought me to. That is why now, and it's not to, it's not to 
you know, toot the horn. I'm telling you this because you're not through. Some of you already did college and you're not as far as you want to be. But guess what? It's not too late. Now, I am not only being mentored by this, you know, Forbes magazine woman who's just brilliant. I'm now meeting with people in Congress in Mexico and, and soon in the U.S., Washington, and, 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 and now soon Guatemala. I'm meeting with the, the one who, who approves every single law in Guatemala. How, how does that happen? You're, Maori, you're that, aren't you that little ex-gangbanger kid? Aren't you that little, that little rug rat that was running around with a temper and angry and messed up? Yeah, that was me, all right. But God, but God can take any loser and make them a winner. God can take any fool that look foolish to man, but not to God. You're not through, guys. And so God is telling the Israelites, come on, man. I didn't ask you whether they're powerful. I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you if you could. I said, I want to give you something. I am wants to give you something. Sorry, I get a little bit, uh, because I believe this. I'm not preaching to you. I live this. You can't think noble if you don't know that you're noble. That's not pride. I think you have more pride when you don't know who you are in Christ. How dare you not know who you are in Jesus? You're a child of God. How about that? But the people who live there are powerful. Their cities have high walls. No one asked for high walls, bro, around them. And they're all very large. I didn't ask for their heights. And, and look this. And we even saw members of the family line. Now they're talking about their awesome family and your family sucks. Their family line is amazing. Oh, my God. That's the anic there, man. You, man, we've heard about that family. Yeah, but hasn't anyone heard about yours? We're, we're proud. We're a proud family in the Ruiz household. I, I want to pass a legacy on to this girl, my daughter, my son Isaac. I want them to go further than me. But they're a product of how I think. They call her meaning me. There's a reason for that. She thinks like me. We have a job to do. The battle will always be in your head, guys. It's here, not here. The problem is not the problem. Your thinking is your problem. The enemy will bully you with lying thoughts, right? You're not good enough. You're never going to succeed. You're never going to move forward. That's why John 8, 44, Jesus said this very clearly. He says, you are of your father, the devil. And the desire, this is pretty harsh, but he's telling the disciples this. You're of the father, you're devil. You're of the father of your devil. Like, wow. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from what? His own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. The only power that the devil has in a lie. The only power in a lie is your belief. Whether you're, whether you're willing to choose that lie. That's it. No other power. He can't jack you up. He can't destroy you. Only that. Only that. Look at this. Numbers 13, 33 says this. There, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, and they came from the giants, and we were all like what? Grasshoppers. How do you see yourself? We're all like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Stand to your feet. Let's get out of here. Listen, what happens here, just to sum this up, to sum this up, what happened here? We know that the Israelites, 1.4 million Israelites, they died in the desert, not because they had problems, because of this. They said, we saw ourselves like grasshopper. God is trying to show them that he has something that is more. He's trying to show them a promise. He's trying to show them some victory. But here is the problem, guys. The Israelites convinced, they talked the people out of the promise of God. Those men that were sent 
were willing and ready to talk out 1.4 million out of the promise of God. How many times have you talked yourself out of your miracle? How many times have you talked yourself out of your breakthrough? Like you're in it to win it, and then within a week, you talk yourself out of it. What happened here with the Israelites? When you believe the lie, then you make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. The enemy will always bully you with lies. But when you begin to make the lie your truth, then you're bringing a self-fulfilling prophecy to your life. And guess what? What they believe they got, <laughs> they never entered. We're going to change the way we think so that we can change the way we believe. Because the truth is this, and this is the last verse here. Last, last verse, uh, point. You have to trust, if you, for you note takers, you have to trust what God said and not what you see. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.